So SAMS 19, I'm going to break down into three portions. Uh, first one starting from verse 1 through 6. The next one starting from verses 7 through 9. And the remaining SAMS, verse, SAMS 19 verses 10 through 14 would be the last section. So the first section, verses 1 through 6, I'm going to read that. The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour out, they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all earth. Their words to the ends of the world. In the heaven God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. Like a, cha like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heaven and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. So that's the first section, verses 1 through 6. And I call this verses as establishing the baseline. Establishing the baseline. So um, the, 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 the scripture says, this verses says, that everything on this earth cries out glory to the God, right? The, every, every creation, everything in this earth cries out. And, and that... that that, that speaks of the greatness of the creation, right? There's nothing on this earth which does not reveal the greatness of God. Everything. So there's no human being who can say, I don't know God. Because this is so much clear, right? The nature which does not speak, the, the, the creation which does not, the skies which does not have any speech, the earth which does not have any speech. But then all this creation talks about God, right? The, the, can, can you believe that the earth is rotating at a speed of 1,000 miles per hour? We are rotating like this. And the whole uh, uh, um, earth is revolving around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour. Can you imagine that? We cannot. And then the recently scientists have found out that, that our, our solar system itself is revolving around something bigger. And, and we don't have that reference, right? We cannot test this because we don't have a reference to test this. Same way we are sitting over here, we cannot feel that revolution, that rotation but that is what the majesty of God is. He has created it in such a way that this cannot be a big bang and that's the baseline establishment that God created the earth. There is no, no question, there is no scientific reasoning required for that thing. You can see all around yourself. <laughs> Romans 1.20 says, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. No one has uh, any excuse to say that who is God or where is God or what is God. No one has an excuse. The scripture says very clearly because this nature, everything very clearly shows who God is and what God is. There is no question about that thing. And that's the first thing is establishing the baseline. Isaiah says that angels, everything on heaven and earth cries out. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord. The whole earth glorifies the, the, his, his name. Everything in, in the earth glorifies the name of That's what I, I, um, Prophet Isaiah says. And, and you remember Jesus Christ said when Pharisees questioned him to asking him to shut his disciples or, or the whole, whole magnitude quiet. Then the Jesus said, if you make them quiet... Then the stones would start crying out. Hallelujah. Stones would start saying, Holy, 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 holy is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what the, this, this creation is. The creation screams out the presence of the God. And that's our baseline. We need to know that there is no existence of us without the God who has created us. That's the first thing. Let's move on to the second portion. The second portion is 
uh, verses 7 through 9. And verses 7 through 9, I'm going to break it up as 7AB, 8AB, and 9AB, okay? So we'll be going through as uh, uh, breaking it into, uh, into the, these different parts. So uh, verses 7A says, the law of the Lord is perfect, okay? So the law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. Uh, that's my version says, and, and here we can even, the other version says, the law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul, okay? Or it can even be reviving the soul, soul, or it can even be returning the soul, or it can even be converting the soul. So that's the law of the of the uh, Lord is. So verses seven through nine that it it calls about different words or for for a very single word. That's the word of the God. The word of the God has been said to be as the law, the statute, the statute, statute. Sorry, the commands, the the uh, decrees. All these words are being used in verses seven through nine, and 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 the first one is the law of the God, which it, the the psalmist David says over here is perfect. One is perfect and it's refreshing. So. The effect of this refreshing so refreshing law, the effect of this restoring law is it refreshes our soul, right? It rebuilds our relationship with the God. Okay, this law that God has given does one big important thing that it restores our relationship with God, and that's the that's the use of this law which God has given us. The, the, the next portion of the uh, uh, verse, verse 7 says, The statutes of the law are trustworthy. So statutes and law, there's not much difference between those two. Uh, law, probably you can think about judges giving law. And statutes, you can think about a, a body of uh, uh, decision makers creating a statutes which ultimately turns into a law. So, so the, the, the 7b says the statutes of the Lord is trustworthy. So wh wh why do we call that the statutes of the Lord is trustworthy? I think uh, the most simple way to think about is, is the God's word are forever. It is not um, it is not simply just word. It's it's his word. He is the creator. His word and his word has a lot of weight. And no, nothing can can deny his word. Word. What he said, he said, and that ha would exist forever. And that's where it, the psalmist say over here is is his word is trust. His statutes are trustworthy. And my version, if you are following in your version, it says making wise the simple. If you use, uh, if you following the verse seven, it says making wise the simple. The the idea over here is the law, the statutes of the God is simple. It's not complicated. It's complicated for those who doesn't want to understand. But it is simple for people who want to pursue him, for people who want to know him, for people who want to uh, open their hearts and, and, and minds and want to see God and seek God. For them it's simple. And that's what is the meaning of the verse of 7b is making the wise simple. Making the wise simple. Or the simple thing that is the law makes the human being wise. So if without law we are foolish, or without the word of the God we are foolish. Think about that that way. Okay, well, we move on to the next um, uh, verse, that's verse number 8. And 8a says, the percepts of the Lord are right. The percepts are, percepts, the, uh, the meaning of percepts is rules. The rules which God has given is right. And you can think about like, um, it, it, it's like the word which leads you in the right direction, okay? The, these are the rules which, has, which God has given us, which leads us into the right direction. And, and it's always the right direction. They are never going to mislead you. These words are never going to mislead you. They are never going to take you down a road which has a dead end. 
These words are going to always lead you in the right direction. And what the next verse says, this gives you joy in the heart. The percepts of, of the Lord are right. It takes you in the right direction and it gives joy to your heart. Imagine like you put a, a put in your Google map a destination and it takes you to the right de destination. How ha happy you would be at the end of the destination that you reached there correctly. right? If you put somewhere and it takes you somewhere different, how frustrated and how uh, how in uh, how um, how much uh, unworthy, not unworthy, and I'm not going to, how much incapable you would be feeling if if the direction, the rules takes you to a, some different the different destination, okay? So that's the verse number 8a is the percepts or the rules of God takes you in the right direction and if you reach the destination, you will have joy. 8b the commandments of the law of the lord are radiant the commandments of the lord are radiant giving light to the uh, to the eyes and and then uh, uh, th that's probably the simplest right god has given us commandment and again uh, uh, we go in in order the he gave the laws he gave the he gave the uh, statutes he gave the percepts and then now we come to the commandments he gave the commandments and we have the 10 commandments and we have all those commandments and his commandments are light and that's what the, the psalmist have said that what different uh, authors have said in, in the scriptures that your word is lamp to the feet that's one 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 one, one you 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 have you remember this verse right in, in in scriptures is that your word is lamp to the feet god's word is lamp to our feet it takes it to the right direction and that's the commandment god's commandments are light to our feet for the commandments is a lamp and the teaching is the light and that's what is his it says over here it's radiant one the light is radiant the light shines and it it radiates and giving light to our eyes and it reveals things and john uh, apostle john said in his one of his uh, letters that uh, jesus is the light who enlightens everyone in the in this world right so jesus is the uh, G Jesus is the word of God who is the true light and is enlightens everything in this world. So that's the 8 uh, B. And the next one is the 9 A. The fear of the Lord is pure. The fear of the Lord is pure. Well, uh, uh, so you, 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 once again, r r going back, the, he gave the law, he gave the statutes, he gave the uh, commandments, he gave the percepts, and now all of a sudden we talk about the fear. Why is fear sitting in between in all these terms? Law, percepts, commandments, uh, uh, statutes, everything. Why is the fear sitting in, in, in between all, all of these? And after 9A, the 9B, and the last one is the decree. Decree is again a, a way of uh, a, a, a firm order decree is like a king's issue decree right a king's kings issue the decree that's an order a firm order so in in between all these different words which pertains to law and commandments everything a word sits which calls which is said fear the fear the fear of the lord is pure okay the fear of the Lord is pure. The first question should be arising is why a word called fear is sitting over here. So I think in this way, like my son Joel would have some fear of me, right? Because he has fear of me, uh, but he also loves me because he knows that I'm his provider. And the same way is, is I, I, I wish like every kids should be having that pure fear of their father and same way we should have that pure fear of our heavenly father because he is our creator and he is our provider like so so his fear is purifying when we say that his fear is pure we also say that his fear is purifying his fear purifies us of all our iniquities okay and the verse goes on to say that his fear is pure and endures forever his fear is pure and it endures forever 
the word of the God endures forever. Everything on this earth can go away, but the word of the God remains and endures forever. First Peter 1.24 says, All flesh is like grass and all is glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls off, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which is preached to you. So the word of the God is pure, it endures forever and that brings us the fear, awe in our heart that he is our creator and whom we should be looking up to all the time. 9b, the last one in, in this section says, the decrees of the Lord are firm. The decrees of the Lord are firm. Like I said, the decree is like a order. A king issues an order, right? Or a, 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 a ruler issues an order. Same way, God, uh, through his word, provided us this firm, very strong um, foundation, you can say that, a stronghold which we have to hold on to us and 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 this stronghold this stronghold what you know what is this this stronghold is his righteousness is his righteousness we don't have to build our own righteousness our righteousness is filthy rags his righteousness is what is firm is strong is never ending so that's what we have to hold on to it, and 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 and, and then uh, that's that's the word, which is strong, firm. That's his word, and that's his righteousness, which we have to hold on to it. Now we come to the last section, uh, verses ten through fourteen. I'm going to read through that. They are more precious than gold, than pure gold. They means the word of the God is more precious than gold than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned, in keeping them there is great reward. Beautiful verses here. So we'll, we'll dissect this last portion into these uh, um, two verses first. This is very clear, you know. If you have a pile of gold over here and, and, a, and, and you have to hold on to God's word, okay, what are you going to select? Yeah? I'll, I'll go to the pile of gold over here, right? So that's our human tendency, right? That's what the, that's what the psalmist over here ten, uh, is saying that if you have a gold and if you have a word, which, what one you are going to select? But this word is so more precious. You know, this word is so more precious than gold and silver and diamond, everything of this world, because this is what is going to take you to heaven. This is what is going to give you the salvation. This is what is going to give you the eternal life. This is what is going to give you the eternal fellowship with Christ in heaven, with the angels glorifying him all the time of their life. We cannot lose this. So if we have these Baals, these Ashrath poles in our life, you know, I call, call this gold as our Baals and Ashrath poles of our life, you know. The Israelites built these big poles, those are called Ashrath poles, and, and they kept on building Baals every time. Right? God warned them, don't do that. But still they did that. But now those Baals and Ashrat poles are not there. And we keep, kept, keep asking, we are good people because we don't build any Baals and any Ashrat poles. But we do build for ourselves gold piles, big savings, big expectations for kids, big expectations for everything in this world. And that's not what we are meant to do. We are meant to do, carry on this precious, hold on to this precious word of God, which is going to give us that eternal life. So, brothers and sisters, the last few verses which I'm going to read through quickly. Verse number 13. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in the sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So, one thing David is telling is that. I can select the gold of this earth. I'm in my humanly flesh, 
can even do things which I don't even know is wrong. I can be sinful. I can, I'm, I'm deep rooted in the word, but still I can be. Uh, I, I, I can. Uh, I can go wrong. But but then what would the, the 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 psalmist David over here is confident that his God is going to is going to forgive him if he comes and talks to him and goes to him. And that's what we have the assurance today in Jesus Christ. The law that we are talking about, the word that we are talking about, everything culminates in Jesus Christ. Our, our deeds, our works, our property, our money, our savings, nothing is going to take us to where we want to be. It's, it's the Christ who is and who will be our stronghold and who is going to make sure that we we are there with him at the end of the ages. With that, brothers and sisters, I hope this is, encourages you. Let's bow our head and think about these words which God has given us. His word is so purifying. His word is restoring us. His word is, is, is everything. It's precious than anything in this world. His word is going to give us the life that we need. Let us all focus into our Christ who is the word of the God. Who is the, 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 the salvation, the redeemer who is everything for us. Let us focus and pray that, that, that we all are, 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 are going to be with him on that end of the age and, and and we will be rejoicing with him on that final day thank you father thank you father for your word for the for for for, for your spirit that 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 gives us this encouragement to be with you forever lord thank you father we will submit this rest of the service unto you lord be with us lord and give us uh, keep our hearts and and thoughts open lord so that we can invite you in our hearts lord and and be blessed lord we ask this through our savior jesus christ 